Be inspired with the special message from Bishop Macedo. Hello dear friends, may God bless all of you and may the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Comforter, the Spirit who guided our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ made available to all those who are willing to hear and obey the word of His Son, Jesus. This is it, dear friends. This is exactly what it is. Because our salvation depends on this obedience to the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes people think like this, Oh, Bishop, pray for me. I know that there are problems that need to be resolved and People have no strength or power, they have no conditions, so they have to be helped through prayers, the prayer of faith and the ministering of the Spirit of God, of the Word of God. So these people are delivered from unclean spirits and they then have the ability to reason and consequently obey the Word of God. However, not everyone is like that. In this exact moment, many people are thinking, oh, what if Bishop placed his hands on my head and prayed for me, my life would certainly change. And these people think that God is a magician. It's not, a, it's not magic. Prayer is not magic. It's not magic that will change your life. Let me tell you something. Pay close attention. It's worth you paying close attention to this and keep this to yourself. When God created Adam and Eve, He created them out of clay. So, He gave them a body of clay, dust. And so, He placed the Spirit, His Spirit, or the Spirit of life in them. And He breathed in them the breath of life the living soul. That's what it says there in the Holy Scriptures. And man became a living being. So, with the soul, a person feels and they have the sensibility of things, the sensibility to appreciate nature, for example, the sensibility to love, to hate, they have the sensibility to enjoy good food, they have the sensibility to hear a good word, the sensibility for everything. The soul is the heart, is that being that feels, that has sensibility and feels everything. That is all the sort of sensations of the body is reflected in the soul, the pain, pleasure, sadness, anguish, joy, everything happens in the soul. The soul is, is, feels it all. So God breathed in man the breath of life and man became a living being. So you have to understand why the prayer won't always resolve the problem. Pay attention. So, God 
gave Adam and Eve the privilege to eat, to enjoy all the fruits that were available in the Garden of Eden. And God would walk with men. But there was one specific tree, which you know already, that God said, listen, from the fruit of this tree, you can't eat, because if you eat, you will die. So, Adam and Eve lived in perfect communion with God. Why? Because sin didn't exist. They didn't have, you know, they hadn't disobeyed God. So, their soul, their soul was obedient to the voice of God until the moment in which, in a time of temptation, they were carried away, until the moment which they tried the forbidden fruit, the fruit that would give them the power to know evil as well, because up until that moment, they only knew what was good until they tried the fruit, until they disobeyed God. Adam and Eve had, let's say, a perfect sensibility. Their soul was perfect, God's sensibility. They would only see and feel what was good, what was right. So there was no sadness, no bitterness, there was no hatred, misunderstandings, there were, there were no diseases. There was nothing evil, nothing bad, nothing. Everything was perfect. Because men didn't have two options. They only had one, the option to do good. And that's why they had perfect communion with God. However, pay attention. When Adam and Eve ate from that fruit, meaning that they disobeyed the word of God, then they said, look, in other words, they said, look, I want to know what evil is like. I don't know what evil is, so I want to know, I want to know evil. And that was it, because when they got to know evil, then they lost the innocence, they lost that purity, because up until then, they only knew good. There was no sadness, there was no bitterness, there was nothing evil, everything was good. The fruit that they had available were wonderful, and they could eat from them all. They had a vast variety of fruit available to eat as much as they wanted. But when they, out of curiosity, wanted to try the forbidden fruit, then they entered in the world, the world of sin, the world of disobedience, the world of disobedience. But they had a mind to think, to reason, am I going to obey or am I not going to obey the voice of God? Because the voice of the devil is always to try people, but the voice of God is to avoid that a person will die and they will try what is evil, that they will know what evil is. Consequently, they left the world of innocence, the garden of innocence, and entered the world of corruption and lies and evil, the world of death. That's the reality. Therefore, dear friends, you have a mind, you are intelligent, you have a spirit. Your spirit makes you think. You think, you reason, you have the ability to consider, to evaluate, yes or no. Then you decide. Your heart doesn't, because the heart only wants what's evil, because the heart is deceiving. Since the fall of man, man has had the DNA of evil within them, which is that deceitful heart. That's it. The heart is wicked, desperately corrupt. And you know that. 
you who are listening or watching me now, you married wrong because you gave ears to the voice of your heart. You made bad decisions because of your heart. You chose the wrong profession because of your heart. I mean, everything, all of our wrong choices were because of our heart. But when man was obedient and they lived in communion with God, they didn't have the option to do any wrong. They had a humble heart. Their heart was perfect. It wasn't deceitful. Their heart was obedient. They would submit to their mind, to their intellect, to their spirit. From the moment that men disobeyed, then they left God's domain and they started to live in the domain of Satan. So Satan started to reign in the earth. So the world is chaos, there's famine, misery, injustices, children starving, wars, and all the hell that there is in the world is because evil reigns in this world. Evil reigns in this world and in those people who don't submit to the word of God. So if you want to change your life, you have to use your reasoning your reasoning and say, no, this does not please God, then I won't do it. You turn your back on that and you go according to the word of God. For example, many people have been experiencing a true hell on earth because they can't forgive. And why can't they forgive? Because their heart is untamable, their heart is evil, their heart is, is a hostage, it's, it's bound to their feelings, to vanities, to lusts, to evil desires, to the fantasies that the world offers. And then the person, obviously, who is already weak because the flesh is weak, then they end up falling you know, and doing whatever they want. Therefore, dear friends, a prayer resolves in the following way. It's what I, I do every day here. I pray for God to open your spiritual eyes so that you may be a spiritual person for you to be able to see evil and turn your back on it in order for you to be able to see God in your life in order for you to, to see that God's hands are outstretched to you. It doesn't matter what you've done, what you didn't do, the bad choices you made. If you return to Him, if you incline your spirit, your intelligence to Him, to His word and obey it, then God will give you a new spirit, God will give you a new heart, and then you will be able to remain in communion with God, doing the right things according to the will of God. And that's why God wants us to do His will, because His will is perfect for you and for me. I was telling Esther and the, the people who are here with me, for example, I've made many wrong choices when I was single, when I was young, so I would always regret until the day that God showed me Esther. She's the perfect person for me. She fits me perfectly. And we live a, a marriage that is happy. Why? Because we submit to one another. We want the best for each other. Why? Because we understand that this is the will of God. He brought us together to make one another happy. And we are happy. 
It's been 52 years, and this is something glorious. It's glorious. And this is what God wants for you. That's what He wants for you. But you have to, you can't be, oh, pray for me as though a prayer is going to work magic. No, you have to make a decision. Use your mind, use your intelligence. Use your head, your intelligence, your ability to reason. God is not going to impose His will on you. He will speak to you. He will teach. Look, this is the way. This is the right way. Don't touch the tree. This tree here will lead you to death. It will kill you. Don't touch it. If you obey, then you can be certain. You can count on God to lead your life, to teach you, to choose the best for you. And when, when I speak of marriage, I, I can tell you this. I can speak about marriage. We can speak about it. We, I mean, the pastors from the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God, we can pray for your family and instruct you and teach you. But we cannot do what you have to do. Your choices are yours. God created Adam and Eve and gave them the power to choose. They chose disobedience, then humanity was born with the DNA of evil. With the DNA of evil. But Jesus came into this world to resolve this problem. So those who put their, their head on, on the stone, on the cornerstone, remember that Jacob in the desert, without any direction, he was desperate. At night, he was running away from his brother who wanted to kill him. So Jacob found a stone in the middle of the desert and there he placed his head on. And then he had a dream and he saw God. He saw angels going up and down there in the place where he was. Why? Because Jacob's head was on the rock. That was Jesus. It was a symbol of the Lord Jesus. The cornerstone. So, Jacob made a vow with God. He prayed. He decided. He decided to follow the word of God. Do the same, dear friends. If you follow the word of God, if you obey the word of God, you will sow good seeds that will force you to harvest good fruits tomorrow. So God works this way. He teaches us the path. If we disobey, if we do not want to learn and follow, then He cannot do anything because He is a Father. And He gives us the right to make choices. Before, we only had the right to choose what was good. But after sin, then the option of evil came into existence. And this is the reason why of all these graces in the world, God is not to blame for all the, the injustices and wars and, you know, disagreements and deaths and misery and famine and injustices. No. No, he did everything perfect. But man, out of their own free will, decided to disobey the word of God. But if man decides to obey the word of God, they can change the situation. It's not a matter of being lucky or having been born with a silver spoon in their mouth. No, not at all. Our life doesn't depend on good luck. Our life depends on our mind, our intelligence. And when I say intelligence, I mean you don't even have to know how to read and write in order to use your intelligence. You only have to obey the Word of God. You only have to obey it. And you will 
so day after day after day and there will come a time that you will start harvesting day after day after day. That's what God wants for all of us. But you have your own will. You have to make your decisions. Oh, pray, pray. Oh, well, if prayer resolved the problems of people, I wouldn't do anything else. I would be praying 24-7 if I could. However, it doesn't work. What's the point of prayers? For example, many people say, Oh, Bishop, I was doing so well, but then I stopped listening to the voice of God, and then I fell, and look at me, I'm lost, and I can't come back. No, you can come back. You can come back. Can't you go to the shopping center? Can't you go, you know, shopping and go out with your boyfriend, your girlfriend? Don't you do what is wrong when you want to do them? Then you can also do what is right. It's just a matter of wanting it. Oh, I can't. No, you can. Don't, don't you come to say, oh, I can't. No, you can. Because when you have a stomach ache, you run to the toilet. Don't you go to the toilet? Oh, come on. When you are hungry, you go eat. Yes or no? When you are sleepy, you go and sleep. So you, you can't go to church and seek God and put your life on the altar. Yes, you can. You don't go, you don't do it because you are being lazy. The devil will do everything to try and stop you from going to the church and going to God. However, you have a will that is above the will of the devil. If you override, I mean, if you reject God's will to do your own, you can also override the devil's will and do your will, which is to go to the house of God or go to the altar. It's just a matter of wanting. You have to want it. It's not, it's not magic. No, dear friends. God, God waits for you on the altar, but you have to go there. You have to go there yourself. You have to go to Him. Then, yes, you are going to see what's going to happen. All right? It's not easy. I say it's not easy for the person to realize, for the penny to finally drop. And then they do what is right. Carnival is around the corner. I'm sure that you have no money, no strength to go to church and this and that, but you saved money to prepare your carnival costume of hypocrisy. You have. Even your costume is already ready. You didn't eat, you, you didn't do this and that in order to prepare your costume to... To, to enjoy carnival. So you can, you can. The Bible says, the Apostle Paul said, I can do all things in He who strengthens me. I can do all things. I can do all things. If you are sincere, if you are sincere and you say, Lord, I'm weak. I don't know how to get out of this. Give me strength. He will give you strength and you are going to come out of this situation. So you decide. It's you who decides your destiny, your future, the future of your soul. Dear friends, you only live once in this world. After death, there is no way anymore. Those who, who are saved were saved. Those who are not, there's no solution for them anymore. There's no purgatory. There's no... There's no such thing as of this cheap talk, oh, you will still be tested there in, in purgatory. No, it's a lie. Purgatory doesn't exist. And you can see that there in Luke chapter 16, when Jesus speaks about the story of Lazarus and the rich man. When Lazarus died, he went straight to Abraham's bosom. Actually, the angels came to get him. But when the rich man died, he went straight to hell. He woke up in hell. So, dear friends, don't be, do not count on the compassion of God whilst you disobey His word. But if you obey His word, then you can count 
on His mercy and compassion and He will change your life. Think about that. Let's, let's be real. It's not a matter of you attending the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God or not, or any church or religion. No, it's a matter of option. You have before you the free will to choose whether to follow the voice of reasoning or to follow the voice of emotion. It's your choice. May God bless you all and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus. I hope I have been able to help somebody today. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen.